In today's lecture, we are going to discuss about the construction of character table for C2H point group based on greater orthogonality theorem. In C2H point group, there are four classes E, C2, I, Sigma H. According to greater orthogonality theorem, the number of classes is equal to number of irreducible representations and since there are four classes there will be four irreducible representations the classes are represented in the top row and the irreducible representations are represented in the left side here we see the classes E, C2, I and Sigma H are represented in the top row the irreducible representations are taken as 1, 2, 3 and 4 and they are represented on this side. Then we come to the dimensions. Dimensions are the characters shown below E. It can have three values 1, 2 or 3. Let the dimensions be L1, L2, L3 and L4 according to great orthogonality theorem. Summation Li square is equal to H. That is L1 square plus L2 square plus L3 square plus L4 square is equal to H. Where H is the total number of operations. The total number of operations in this case is E, C2, I and Sigma H. There are four operations. And so value of H is equal to 4. So the sum of L1 square, L2 square, L3 square and L4 square should be 4. It is true only when all of them are 1. 1 square plus 1 square plus 1 square plus 1 square is equal to 4. That is L1 square is equal to L2 square is equal to L3 square is equal to L4 square is equal to 1. That is L1 is equal to 1, L2 is equal to 1, L3 and L4 are also equal to 1. These are the dimensions in the character table. Let's we look at the topmost row, it represents a completely symmetric representation. All the characters are completely symmetric. When you say completely symmetric, all of them should carry positive values. And so, characters in the topmost row are all positive values of 1. Let the, all the remaining characters that are yet to be filled up be represented by Xi, Oi, and Zi, where I is 1, 2 or 3. That is in the second irreducible representation x1, y1 is a 1. Third irreducible representation x2, y2 is a 2. And the fourth irreducible representation x3, y3. Next, using greater orthogonality theorem, once again you have summation jp chi i square equal to x. Though it looks like x, we will read it as chi i, where chi i is the character in the irreducible representation, that is the numbers the character table. Chi A is the character in the particular reducible representation, particular row of this table. And GP is the number of operations in the particular class. If you take the case of E, the number of operations is 1. The number of operations in C2 is also 1. The number of operations in I is also 1. The number of operations in Sigma H is also 1. And so, the GP is always 1 in this particular. H is the total number of operations in the group, which is 4, we have already said. Now, if we take the second row, 1, X1, Y1, and so on. GP is number of operations in the particular class. Number of operations in the particular class is always 1 in this group. And so, applying this logic, we get 1 square plus x1 square plus y1 square plus z1 square is equal to 4. Next, if we apply the same logic to the third irreducible representation, we get the character under E as 1, C2, X2. I, Y2 is a 2. According to this rule, summation GP equal to Ki square equal to 
gp into chi a square equal to h the value of gp is 1 in all the cases and so 1 square plus h2 square plus y2 square plus z2 square equal to 4 in general 1 square plus x i square plus y square plus z i square equal to 4 all the terms are 1 that means x i square is equal to y square is equal to z i square is equal to 1 and when you take the square root x i equal to oi equal to z i equal to plus or minus 1 you can take either the plus 1 value or minus 1 value which you are going to solve right now once again according to greater orthogonality theorem summation gp chi a chi j equal to 0 where gp is the number of operations in a particular class for e it is 1 c2 it is 1 for i it is 1 sigma h is 1 chi a represents the characters in one irreducible representation whereas chi 2 represents the characters in another irreducible representation applying this rule if we take the case of two irreducible representations one and two gp is always one and chi a chi j is 1 into 1 first one second is 1 into x1 and we get x1 1 into y1 we get y1 and 1 into is around we get is around 1 plus x1 plus y1 plus is around equal to 0 next if we take the two irreducible representations 1 and 3 gp is 1 chi a is 1, chi j is 1, 1 into 1, 1, 1 into x2 is x2, 1 into y2 is y2, 1 into z2 is z2. And in general, we can assume 1 plus xi plus oa plus zi equal to 0. Sum of four terms is 0. That means if two terms are plus 1, the remaining two terms should be minus 1 only then we'll have the total coming out to be 0 if any two terms are positive the two remaining terms will be negative that is something like this if you look at the second irreducible representations you'll find 2 1 2 minus 1s third irreducible representation 2 plus 1s 2 minus 1s fourth irreducible representations you will find 2 plus 1s and 2 minus 1 and that is what we mean by this next we come to naming these irreducible representations which are already present as 1 2 3 and 4 if the dimension is 1 the symbol is a or b the dimension is the character under the class e we find that the dimension is always 1 and so the symbol is either a or b the next rule is it is symmetric to principal axis. Principal axis in this case is C2. That is the only axis available. And if it is symmetric, the value is positive. And if the value is positive, the symbol is A. Here the value is positive, the symbol is A. Here also the value is positive, and so the symbol is. If it is anti symmetric to the principal axis, the symbol is B. Anti symmetric means minus 1, the negative value. Under C2, you find a negative value. If you find a negative value, the symbol is B. Here also we find minus 1 and the symbol is B. Let's we look at the characters corresponding to inversion, that is the center of symmetry. If it is symmetric to inversion, that means positive values. Here you find plus 1, here you find plus 1. If it is symmetric to inversion, it is AG or BG. If it is anti-symmetric to inversion, that is the characters under i are negative. If it is minus 1, minus 1, then it is au or bu. This is how the irreducible representations are named using Milligan notations. Next, what we are going to do is apply these operations. Which operations? E, C2, i and sigma h on the various orbitals. What are the orbitals? S orbital, P orbital, d orbitals apply these operations on each of these orbitals and find out how the orbitals behave whether it is symmetric or anti-symmetric and based on the results if it is symmetric plus one if it is anti-symmetric minus one what is the set of results which we get and depending upon the set of results we get we place if it is s orbitals which is completely symmetric normally it comes under 
the completely symmetric row A corresponding to a square, Y square, Z square, etc. For P orbitals, we have to look at the Cartesian coordinates X, Y and Z in the character table which come in any one of these groups. And if it is D orbitals, we have to look at the quadratic terms. And similarly, we apply the symmetry operations on the rotation vectors Rx, Ry and Rz. And based on these results, the rest of the character tables are filled up and you get something like this. Here we find the results Rz, Rx and Ry. That means when the rotation of the Rz vector is so seen, for each operation Ec to I sigma H, we find all of them are completely symmetric. And so it is kept here. A square y square z square correspond to s orbital and what we find here once again we get completely symmetric results and so it is kept placed here for rx or ry for rotation about rx or ry it is symmetric to e and i whereas it is anti-symmetric to c2 and sigma h and so it is placed here for the symmetric operation with respect to p z for example it is symmetric to e and c2 it is anti-symmetric to i n sigma h and so it is placed here. The c2 h here represents the point group. E c2 i n sigma h represents the symmetric operation. A g b g a u and b u represent the mulligan symbols. And all these numbers plus ones and minus ones represent the characters. And these last two columns starting from r z including all this x y z the Cartesian terms and a square y square z square x y y z x z the quadratic terms are based on the operations on orbitals and rotation vectors this is the complete character table for the c2h point group thank you